just around one and a half years ago, I did something really special. I retired from work, from organizations, just because there's one thing. I realized who needs a boss? I wanted to be my own boss. And I even chose this cold and windy Toronto to live in because I didn't want a boss in Saudi Arabia. Good evening, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I did this one day, and I recommend it to all of you. How many of you are working? <laughs> and how many of you listen to boring meetings, sit there and listen? Oh, there's one hand. Oh, there's another hand. Some more, okay. There was this time when I was sitting and in this meeting, there was the vice president there, some managers, and it was getting real boring. I started. And suddenly I remembered something. Have you played meeting bingo? How many of you have played meeting bingo? No? No. I recommend this. Next time you're sitting in this boring meeting, go ahead and join us. You have to draw a big square. Make five rows, draw lines to create five rows and five columns. So you have 25 cells, right? Rows, columns. On the leftmost side, write those words that you always listen to in these boring meetings. Okay, how many of you keep hearing the word synergy? <laughs> Whatever that means. Core competencies, thinking outside the box, strategic fit, paradigm shift. Oh, the list can go on and on and on. And I was sitting and listening to this. So I decided to put these five words on the side. And every time I heard one, I would check one box. Now the way you play meeting bingo is if you go horizontally, as soon as you finish it, you stand up and say, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's my kind of meeting. <laughs> I did just that. <laughs> now you know why I retired. <laughs> I would prefer Toronto. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, my boss has been extremely special. He, has this he had this really great personality. You know, he used to say, Jasmine, what do you think we should do in five years? And I says, oh, we should be doing this, this, this. Why don't you write it? And the next thing I know, he's presenting it at the management meetings. Am I the only one with this yeah. problem? where my ideas become my boss's ideas. Mm -hmm. That's what happens in organizations. They always take your ideas and make it their ideas. Then the other parts came on. They kept saying, you have to be creative. You have to be innovative. So I said, yes, I have to be creative. So I sat and did this great project. I started hiring people for this project, and boom, it, it fell bust. It wasn't a great project, I failed. So my boss came and shouted at me, how dare you do this? What do you mean? I said, but you told me to be creative. That's what I did. I was being innovative. I started hiring people because I need to do this. And he said, no way, you failed. I just thought to myself, I wonder who was Edison's boss. He failed 9,999 times. That's what he said. And my boss, the one time I failed, he caught me. Who needs this boss? 
and there were other times. You know, one day he was talking to his boss, and I guess his boss was firing him. So he says, I have a lot of dead wood here. And my mind flitted back into Dr. Ed Deming. Have you heard the story of Dr. Ed Deming? You know what he did? He was a management consultant, and he was called to Japan. This was in the 1950s, when Japan was not a developed economy. And they had a lot of problems. So he was asked to come and help that economy. He went there, and he asked the management, so what's the problem? And he said, we have plenty of dead wood. Dead wood? He just looked at them and he said, did you hire them dead? Or did you kill them? I thought my boss had to listen to this. So I sent him. You know, this was one of those emails that come, keep coming to you. You know those hundreds of emails? Like, this was one of them, so I s immediately sent it to him. Okay, now you know the main reason why I'm living in Toronto a retired life. Because I decided that whoever wants a boss, I don't. Madam, <laughs> those bastards. <laughs>